This podcast was produced using artificial intelligence and refined by human editors. Ciao bellissimi. Welcome to another episode of Travel with Lara and Luca, your go-to podcast for all things related to globetrotting, trying not to look like a tourist, and maybe learning a word or two in Italian along the way. And probably forgetting it shortly after. But that's okay, because we're all about the experience here. I'm your co-host, Luca, Naples-born and pizza-raised. Pizza-raised? I love that. And I'm Lara, not born in Naples, but definitely spaghetti-smitten. Together, we're your virtual, slightly off-kilter travel guides to the chaotic beauty that is Naples, Italy. You may wonder, why Naples? Well, my friends, besides having the best pizza on the planet, no arguments there, this city is a treasure trove of history, art, and yes, even a few secret alleyways that we might share if you stick with us. Right, we might just spill a few Neapolitan beans on this episode. But before we take a deep dive into the streets of Napoli, let me just share a plucky little story from the last time Luca and I met up down there. Oh, do tell. My memory is like Swiss cheese, so I probably forgot about it already. So there we were, strolling down via Toledo, and Luca here decides he wants a coffee. But not just any coffee. Ah, uh, yes. Now it's coming back to me. I wanted a cafe sospeso. Exactly. A cafe sospeso, which is this heartwarming tradition in Naples, where you pay for two coffees, but only drink one. The other is left suspended for someone who can't afford it to claim later. That's the Neapolitan spirit for you. But the funny thing was, you know me, a bit of a cheapskate from time to time. A bit? All right, all right, a royal cheapskate. Anyhow, I accidentally handed the barista a two-cent coin instead of a two-euro coin. The look on his face was a mix between amusement and who let this guy out again. I stepped in to save the day, of course. With my dazzling smile and apologetic charm, we still managed to leave that coffee bar with our dignity somewhat intact. Barely. And my caffeinated soul is forever in your debt, Cara Lara. The things I do for you and coffee, my friend. Speaking of endearing stories, today we're zeroing in on the pulsating heart of Naples. Imagine this, a vast open space, flanked by the grandeur of royal and ecclesiastical architecture. Piazza del Plebiscito. Ah, the Plebiscito, where even the scatterbrained pigeons seem to waltz in sync. No joke, I once saw a group of them line up as if they were about to perform a flash mob. Only in Naples would pigeons have such flair. But truly, this piazza is not just an architectural gem. It's a stage where everyday Neapolitan life unfolds, from political rallies to outdoor concerts. And I bet you didn't know this, but there's an urban legend that says if you can walk across Piazza del Plebiscito with your eyes closed and not bump into anyone or anything, you'll have good luck. So, so that's why you were zigzagging across the square with your arms flailing last time. I was merely testing the theory in the name of science. Spoiler alert, I had to apologize to a few pigeons and one very confused tourist. Always the gentleman. But moving from the spacious outdoors to the cozy confines of the historic center, we have an area so steeped in history that UNESCO gave it a nod in 1995 saying, yep, this is the good stuff. That's the exact wording, right from the UNESCO declaration. Well, maybe paraphrased a bit. But in all honesty, the historic center of Naples is a layered cake of cultures, civilizations, and some pretty resilient cobblestones. It's a living museum. All right, we should probably wrap up this introduction before we get too sidetracked again. And I see Luca is about to challenge me to a scooter spotting contest. You're on, my friend. Excellent. But for now, we'll take you on an audible journey through the streets of Naples, chatting about everything from heavenly pizzas that you'll dream about to the mythical underworld that lies beneath. So, strap on your virtual Vespa helmets and get ready to weave through the narrow streets with us because today's episode is all about falling in love with the chaos and charm of Naples. All right, strap in, or should I say, Lace up your walking shoes, because we are about to take you on a virtual stroll through the beating heart of Napoli, the Piazza del Plebiscito. It's such a vast, open space, surrounded by the royal palace on one side and the stunning basilica of San Francesco di Paola on the other. It's the kind of piazza where you feel compelled to whisper, now that's grand. Napoli scores a goal, and suddenly the piazza erupts. 
like strangers hugging, people singing the Napoli anthem, the energy is absolutely electric. It's amazing how sports can turn a crowd of individuals into a single exuberant entity. And speaking of unity, that piazza has seen its share of political rallies and historical events too. It's like a living, breathing focal point where past meets present. Well said. And it's not only about grand events. Sometimes it's the small everyday gatherings that catch your eye. Like that time I saw a group of nanas, all dressed in black, each sitting on their own chair, which they brought from home. Only in Naples do you bring your own chair to a piazza. But these nanas, they set themselves in a circle, right there in the middle of the square, crocheting, gossiping, and if I remember your story correctly, bossing around the occasional stray dog. Exactly. They're like the unofficial mayors of the piazza. They see everything. It's a proper Neapolitan pastime. And between us, remember, try not to get on a Nana's bad side. They have connections. Duly noted. But let's wander a bit further, away from the piazza, through the heart of the historic center. A patchwork of narrow alleys, Baroque churches, and little squares where laundry is artfully hung between buildings. It's pure, undistilled Naples. Ah, the historic center, the Spacanapoli. The streets are so narrow, it feels like you can stretch your arms out and touch buildings on both sides. It's also a paradise for street food. Ever had a cuapo di mare, Lara? Oh, the cuapo. For those who don't drool over Neapolitan street food like Luca and I, a cuapo di mare is this paper cone filled with assorted fried seafood. It's a taste of the ocean in every bite. A taste of the ocean and a test for your white shirts, because you will drip some. It's the Naples way. In fact, Lara, remember the Quapo challenge? How could I forget? We dared each other to eat a Quapo without getting a single spot of oil on our clothes. You lost spectacularly, by the way. I did. My favorite shirt still bears the scars. But moving on from my tragic fashion mishaps, let's talk more about the architecture and ambiance of the historic center, shall we? Absolutely. So we're talking cobbled streets, centuries-old buildings, and... Oh, the best part, laundry hanging out to dry as if it's proclaiming, this is how you add color to life. Some say it's tradition. Others say it's because Neapolitan apartments can be tiny and they lack space. I say it's performance art. And the performers are the residents, each day giving us a different scene. There's also something special about these streets, a particular scent. Ah, the aroma. It's a blend of fresh pizza dough from a forno, coffee brewing on a stovetop, basil from a nearby balcony garden, and if the wind is generous, a whiff of the sea. Talking about balconies, have you ever noticed how Neapolitans communicate between them? It's like a sport. Oh, absolutely. They'll shout from the fifth floor to someone in the next building, or down at street level, passing the news of the day, or simply letting them know they've got extra tiramisu. I recall overhearing a conversation where a signora was berating her husband for buying the wrong type of tomatoes. That man will never mistake San Marzano for Pianolo again. Tomato trauma aside, it's this communal sense of living out loud that makes Naples so vibrant. And speaking of which, let's not forget the churches. Naples has more churches than you can shake a stick at. Absolutely. Tales of saints and miracles are woven into the very fabric of the city. Like the miracle of San Gennaro, you know, the one where the saint's dried blood liquefies. Yes. Three times a year, people flock to the Duomo to witness this event. And if the blood doesn't liquefy, legend warns of disaster. It's like a mystical lottery. How many saintly lotteries have you won, Luca? Well, let's just say I've witnessed more pantomime lotteries than mystical ones. But you've got to admire the faith and passion. That's Naples. Faith, passion, and a hearty dose of superstition. It all mixes together to create the soul of the city. And the historic center, well, that's where you'll feel that soul beating the strongest. Walking these streets, it's hard not to feel connected to something greater, a sense of community and history that reaches out and grabs you. So dear listeners, if you find yourself meandering through the heart of Naples, whether it's Piazza del Plebiscito or the historic center, take a moment to breathe it all in, the sights, the smells, the sounds of a living city that has seen empires rise and fall and through it all remains unapologetically gloriously Neapolitan. And remember, watch out for those nanas with their chairs. They are the true guardians of the piazza. Guardians equipped with crochet hooks and endless wisdom. 
But now that we've painted a picture of the piazza and the historic center, it's time to move on to one of the most important aspects of any culture, SIBO, the food. Get ready to hear all about Naples' iconic dishes and perhaps some of Luca's culinary misadventures. Yes, which are always entertaining, albeit slightly messy. So stick around as we uncover the mouth-watering delights of Napoli. Welcome back, dear travelers. Fasten your napkins like bibs because we're about to embark on a culinary journey through Naples. This city is a gastronomical wonderland. Oh, where to begin? If Naples had a middle name, it would be pizza, no contest. Naples and pizza go together like, like... Like Lara and Luca? Exactly. Now I must confess, I've never met a pizza I didn't like, but Neapolitan pizza, that's the godfather of them all. Oh, absolutely. It all started with the classic margarita pizza. The story goes that back in 1889, to honor the queen consort of Italy, Margarita of Savoy, chef Raffaele Esposito created a pizza resembling the colors of the Italian flag, red tomatoes, white mozzarella, and green basil. And a star was born. You know, Lara, I like to say that all pizzas are equal, but some pizzas are more equal than others. And in Naples, it's not just about the toppings, it's about the soul that goes into making the pizza. Pizza soul. I'd listen to that album. Let's tell our listeners about the art of Neapolitan pizza making, which by the way, is UNESCO heritage listed. It's all about the dough, hands stretched with a technique that has been passed down for generations. Then it's fired up in a wood-burning oven and what comes out is a thing of beauty. That's right, pillowy crusts, slightly charred at the edges with that perfect chewiness that just makes your heart sing. And it's not just the margarita, you have the marinara, the capricciosa, the diavola. Hold up, Luca. Let's not get lost in a pizza fantasy. We have an entire city of flavors to discover. What's next on our culinary tour? Oh yeah, we must press on, for the sea also offers its bounties to Napoli, and the seafood here is fresher than a new pair of socks. What a comparison. Yes, locals often start their day with a trip to the fish market, picking from the day's catch to create dishes like impapata di cozze, that's mussels in a pepper broth, or fried anchovies that glisten like little salty jewels. One bite, and you're transported to the Mediterranean. And then there was my traumatic encounter with the live octopus dish. Remember that, Lara? Oh, how could I forget? Luca here decides he's going to be adventurous and orders polpo vivo at a traditional eatery. Yeah, I was feeling all Anthony Bourdain-like until it arrived, still wriggling on the plate. I must have looked like I'd seen a ghost. But the locals? They dove in with gusto. Our dear Luca practically ran out of the restaurant chased by an octopus tentacle from his imagination. Very funny, but moving swiftly on from my octopus escapades, coffee is next on our must-sip list. Ah, Neapolitan coffee. It's small, but life-altering. They take their coffee seriously here. It's practically a spiritual experience. I mean, you don't just have a coffee in Naples. No, no, no. You live a coffee in Naples. And for those wondering, we're talking about espresso here, short, strong, and with a crema on top that poets write sonnets about. It's the kind of jolt that makes you feel like running a marathon. Exactly. And at every corner, there's a cafe promising the best coffee you'll ever drink. Luca, remember the great Sfogliatella showdown we had? We spent a day sampling these flaky ricotta-filled pastries from different cafes to see who made it best. Oh, that was epic. I think I gained six pounds just from the powdered sugar alone. But we did find that one cafe, tucked away in a little side street. What was the name? Pasticceria Pintauro, established in 1785. That's Fogliatella. It was like eating a cloud with a sweet, creamy core. And speaking of sweet, let's not sidestep the infamous Lemoncello incident. Do you mean the night you thought Lemoncello was just lemonade? In my defense, it was incredibly refreshing. It's not every day you get to drink something that tastes like sunshine and kicks like a mule. It kicks, all right. Friends, Lemoncello is Naples' sweet, zesty lemon liqueur, and it's sipped in small doses, usually after dinner, to aid your digestion, or in Luca's case, to send you singing down the street under the moonlight. Ah, what a tune that was. But hey, in Naples, you sing, you laugh, and most importantly, you eat. It's the city's love language. Whether it's pizza, seafood, or the sweet, potent limoncello, you're expressing and experiencing joy. That's beautifully put, Luca. And that joy is felt in every bite, 
every sip, every aroma wafting down an alleyway or sitting in an old piazza. Naples offers a feast, not just for your stomach, but for your soul. So as we wrap up this taste-tripping segment, remember, when in Naples, eat as the Neapolitans do, with passion, with joy, and maybe with an extra shirt for those quapo drips. Good advice, but don't go anywhere just yet. We have more Neapolitan tales and flavors waiting for you. Up next, we're gonna take you beneath the streets to explore Naples' underground mysteries. There's a whole other world beneath your feet in Naples, a hidden universe waiting to be explored. Stick with us, travelers. Beneath the vibrant street life and the intoxicating aromas of the city, there's a different side of Naples unknown to sunlight. Welcome to the underworld, Naples' underground mysteries. An underground labyrinth stretching beneath the city, evidence of past lives, wars, and secrets. The Napoli Sauterania, 40 meters below the hustle and bustle, is a whole other dimension. I've ventured down there more than once, and each time, it feels like stepping back into history. Picture this, ancient Greek aqueducts, World War II air raid shelters, underground theaters, even a subterranean garden. That's right, and the plants grow despite the lack of natural light, thanks to special lamps. It has this surreal beauty, like something out of a fantasy novel. And here's a confession. I am, without a shadow of a doubt, directionally challenged. I have an uncanny talent for getting lost down there, even with a guide. Oh, we've noticed, Luca. Listeners, picture this. Luca, bravely leading the way, turns a corner, and suddenly it's like we're in an episode of Where in the World is Luca San Giovanni? Embarrassing but true. Good thing those guides know their stuff. And speaking of getting lost, there's that famous story about the lost World War II bomb, right? Oh, yes. During the war, a bomb plummeted into the city and was lost in the underground. It was only found decades later, luckily unarmed, and is now part of the tour. It's crazy to think about the history we walk over every day. It's a testament to the resilience of this city. And there's so much more. The catacombs, cisterns, even remnants of noblemen's theaters. Naples Underground is shrouded in an air of mystery and history. And speaking of mysteries, Luca, didn't you hear the one about a hidden treasure supposedly stashed somewhere in the tunnels? Ah, the treasure. Legend has it that somewhere beneath our feet lies a hoard of riches, right next to my sense of direction, probably. We'll send an expedition one day. But it's not just underground where life in Naples thrives. Let's resurface to the bustling street life and markets. Ah, the street life of Naples. It's like stepping into a living, breathing market where every day is a performance and everyone's a character in this grand play of life. Well put, it's like you can't walk 10 feet without stumbling upon a market stall selling something you didn't know you needed. Like genuine, authentic Rolex watches or sun-ripened cherries begging to be tasted. And let's not forget the street food vendors with their mobile pizzerias. By the way, did I ever tell you about the time I met the self-proclaimed Michelangelo of mozzarella? No, but this sounds like a story our listeners need to hear. So there I am, wandering the Quartieri Spagnoli, and I see this chap with a sign that says, the Sistine Chapel of Cheese. Curious, I approach, and this guy, Salvatore was his name, starts giving me a passionate lecture about the art of mozzarella making. He even sculpted a little cheese angel right before my eyes. Only in Naples would you meet a mozzarella artist. I have to wonder though, did it taste as heavenly as it looked? It was divine. And that's Naples for you. Even the cheese tells a story. Speaking of stories, remember the time you found that hidden street art spot? Yes, it's this almost secret alleyway off Via dei Tribunali. It's like a street gallery, all unofficial and constantly changing. One piece in particular caught my eye, a lifelike portrait of Sophia Loren painted on a rusty old door. A tribute to a Neapolitan icon on a Neapolitan door. That's art imitating life, imitating art. And when I claimed I knew the place, should we tell them about your little white lie? Maybe it wasn't entirely truthful to say I'd known about it all along. But come on, in Naples, we're storytellers by nature, and a little embellishment never hurt anyone. That's true. Naples lives out loud. With its art, its passion, its noise, it's an everyday symphony composed of shouting vendors, laughing children, and the growl of Vespa engines. Every street corner, every piazza has its pulse. 
And whether you're wandering underground amidst history or above, amidst the chaos of life, Naples embraces you with open arms. It's a city that never truly quiets, always talking, always moving, always alive. But as much as we love the din of the streets, let's shift our focus to a different kind of culture. Up next, we'll be exploring the art scene, music, and those peculiar traditions that make this city so undeniably unique. I may even sing a little O Sola Mio for you, or not. On second thought, let's save their ears, Luca. Stay with us, dear listeners, as we dive into the cultural heartbeat of Naples. Welcome back, Amici. After feasting our palates and adventuring through the underground, let's now marvel at the rich tapestry of culture that envelops Naples. Here, art is life, and life is a masterpiece. Naples, the birthplace of the heartfelt Canzona Napolitana, songs that tell stories of love, sorrow, and the Neapolitan spirit. Lara, do you hear the mandolin? Just makes you want to throw open a window and belt out, O oh, Sole Mio. Could be your big break, Luca. Forget podcasting. Neapolitan opera is calling your name. No, no, my dear. I'll leave the singing to the professionals, like at the Teatro di San Carlo. It's only one of the oldest working opera houses in the world. Every note in that place vibrates with history. Oh, it's magnificent. Gold leaf, red velvet, and a crystal chandelier that outshines the stars. I remember seeing a ballet there once. I swear, for a moment, it felt like time itself had stopped to admire the grace of the dancers. It's a place where every performance is an event, a celebration of culture that you can feel in the very walls. And speaking of culture, let's not forget the art. The Museo di Capodimonte, perched on a hill like a crown jewel. Ah, the Capodimonte, housing masterpieces from artists like Caravaggio, Raphael, and Titian. Seeing such works up close, it's humbling. It's as if every brushstroke holds a secret of the past. Just one of the many reasons I brag about Naples. And it's not just in the museums and theaters where culture thrives. Walk through the streets during a festa and you're part of a tradition steeped in centuries. Absolutely. Take the Feast of San Gennaro, for instance. The city comes alive with processions, stalls, and that unforgettable moment when the patron saint's blood supposedly liquefies, a performance of faith that unites the city. Ah, and the superstitions, like throwing a dish out the window on New Year's Eve to ward off bad spirits. You've got to admire the Neapolitan's commitment to a fresh start. Just watch out for flying ceramics. But traditions here, they serve as the city's heartbeat, like the time I attended a Neapolitan wedding. Oh, do tell. I bet it was nothing short of spectacular. Where do I begin? It was a feast for the senses, a day-long celebration sprinkled with ancient customs. After the eye doze, on every guest's plate was placed a sugared almond, a confetto, representing the bittersweet nature of marriage. Did you catch the bouquet, or perhaps a flying almond? I may have dodged both, to be honest, but you know what's funnier? Seeing Luca try to use gestures to communicate at a noisy wedding reception. Hey, that's an art form here. Neapolitan gestures, expressive, animated. You can have an entire conversation without uttering a single word. True. There's a gesture for everything, from watch your back to this espresso is heavenly. It's like a dance of hands and fingers. Speaking of dancing, why don't we step back a bit and dive into the music traditions a little more? You've got the classical, but then there's also the folk, the tarantella, which has an infectious rhythm designed to get even the shyest nana twirling. The tarantella is not just a dance, it's an invocation, a plea to purge all woes to embrace life's fleeting wonders. And it's not uncommon to see it spontaneously erupt in a piazza. Yes, life in Naples is a dance, a song, a living artwork. It's not just about experiencing culture, it's about being part of it, participating in it, embracing its quirks and passions. Neapolitans live with a vigor that runs through their veins, reflected in every tradition, every chord of music, every statue and painting that graces this city. There's resilience there, a joyous defiance against the ebb and flow of fortunes. And perhaps that's what we travelers can learn from Naples. It's a place that rolls with the punches, but also dances in the face of adversity. It's a city that never forgets to celebrate life. So, as we near the end of this cultural exploration, we urge you, when in Naples, go see an opera, visit the museums, take to the streets during a festa, and let yourself be swept away by the sheer force of Neapolitan life. 
and maybe learn a gesture or two. It might just come in handy. Invaluable for the traveler's toolkit. But don't stray too far, friends. We've still got one more journey for you. That's right. We'll be taking you beyond the city on side excursions that promise wonder and adventure. From the azure allure of Capri to the haunting ruins of Pompeii, join us as we discover what lies just outside Napoli's embrace. Ready your maps and pack your curiosity, because as much as Naples captivates, the siren call of nearby destinations is irresistible. Join us as we embark on a journey to enigmatic ruins and enchanting isles. Yes, for our first excursion, just picture the sun glistening on azure waters, the scent of lemon trees in the air, and dramatic cliffs rising to the skies. Welcome to the mythical island of Capri. Capri, a slice of paradise that has charmed everyone from Roman emperors to modern day jet setters. Lara, remember the blue grotto? That intense blue light, ethereal, as if the sea itself was glowing. Absolutely. The Grotta Azzurra is like nothing else, a sea cave where the water shines electric blue thanks to the light that passes through an underwater cavity. It's breathtaking. And I'm not just talking about the tight squeeze to get inside those rowboats. Ah yes, the famous duck your head or get dunked moment. But once inside, it's another world, a tranquil, radiant, almost surreal serenity. Magical, really. And up on the island, the vistas from the gardens of Augustus. How did it make you feel, Lara? Standing there, overlooking the Faraglioni rocks jutting from the sea, I felt timeless. As if I could throw a coin into the waves and make a wish that forever changed my fate. Capri isn't just a place, it's a poem, an emotion, a dream. But our escapades don't end on its shimmering shores. For history buffs and archaeology enthusiasts, the nearby ruins of Pompeii await, frozen in time. Pompeii, once a thriving Roman city, stopped dead in its tracks by the infamous eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. Today, it stands as a poignant reminder of nature's power. The ash and pumice from Vesuvius preserve the city in eerie detail, from the frescoes in the villas to the expressions of the plaster cast victims. I get chills every time I walk its cobblestone streets. It's a humbling experience, like traveling back two millennia. You can almost hear the echoes of the past, the clinking of the blacksmith's shop, the calls of the vendors in the forum. Speaking of echoes, Luca and Pompeii's streets are a never-ending maze. Let's just say I took a scenic route that left me asking a centurion statue for directions. Yes, and our valiant, Luca, was saved by a group of friendly tourists. Pompeii has a way of revealing one's true sense of direction, or lack thereof. Hey, it's easy to get lost in history. But not all of Pompeii's neighbors share the same fate. Not far lies Herculaneum, also buried by Vesuvius, smaller than Pompeii, but remarkably well-preserved. In Herculaneum, the ruins are so intact that you can walk into ancient homes and see wooden furniture still standing. The town offers a distinct, intimate glimpse into Roman life. Let's not forget the intrepid ones among us who dare to ascend Mount Vesuvius itself. The hike to the crater is a testament to human curiosity, coming face to face with the volcano that shaped history. I'll never forget that sulfurous smell, the steam vents, it's like peering into the heart of the earth. A heart that can both create and destroy. It's powerful and humbling. But hey, after all these exhilarating excursions, you might be wondering about a more laid back detour, right? And for that, we sail to the tranquil island of Ischia. With its thermal waters, picturesque towns, and lush landscapes, it's the perfect antidote to Pompeii's somber reminders and Vesuvius's smoldering menace. Ischia is where you go to breathe, to bask in the sun, and to let the island's healing waters rejuvenate your weary bones. A true spa paradise. Each of these excursions, whether filled with mystery, tragedy, or tranquility, adds another layer to the story of your Napoli adventure. So, whether you're soaking up the sun on Capri, wandering the ruins of an ancient world, or clinking a glass filled with Ischia's own vino, know you're not just a traveler, you're a part of the timeless tale that is Campania. Well said, Luca. It's been a whirlwind journey through the alleys of Naples and the myths of Capri, Pompeii's stillness, and Ischia's gentle waves. We laughed, reminisced, and even sang a bit, or at least we threatened to. Right, the threat of my singing might have been more terrifying than Pompeii's history, but Lara here kept me in check. 
As we wrap up today's episode of Travel with Lara and Luca, we can't help but feel it's just the beginning of the many adventures to come. And as we've traipsed through the marvels of Naples and beyond, we hope you felt like you were walking right alongside us, tasting the sfogliatella and dodging Vespas on the sun-baked streets. Dodging Vespas should be an Olympic sport in Napoli. But if by any chance you do embark on that challenge, don't forget a good pair of running shoes. And remember, Naples is not just a destination. It's a feeling, an experience that clings to your soul. It's the sensation of warm cobblestones underfoot, the ringing laughter from a nearby cafe, the mellifluous melodies of a street musician's violin. It's the culmination of culture, food, and art that makes life in Napoli such an immersive tale. Immersive indeed, especially when it involves getting lost underground, or in Luca's case, in every possible direction. We may need to get you a compass for the next episode, Luca. That, or a personal guide dog. But speaking of the next, before we bid our listeners arrive derci, I dare you, Lara, to a street food showdown for our next visit to Napoli. Who can eat the most arancini without succumbing to a food coma? You're on, Luca, but only if you agree to attempt a Vespa ride without causing a traffic jam. Consider it a deal. Be sure to tune in for that, listeners. It's sure to be a spectacle. And as always, we invite you to share your own travel stories, questions, or even dare to send us a challenge for our next escapade. You can connect with us through our social channels or simply drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you, your insights, your favorite moments, and yes, even your pizza topping preferences. So whether you're a seasoned traveler or dreaming of your first Italian adventure, we're here to inspire and excite you because every corner of the world holds a story. And who knows, it might just become a chapter in your life. As the sun sets on today's journey, remember that each sunrise brings a new destination, a new melody, and a new taste. Let the world unfold before you, page by page, bite by bite, laughter by laughter. We're truly thankful for the laughter and the stories we've shared with you today. Keep exploring, keep dreaming, and most importantly, keep traveling. Grazie mille, our dear travel companions. Until next time, I'm Luca. And I'm Lara. And this has been Travel with Lara and Luca. Ciao cari amici. You've been listening to Travel with Lara and Luca. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave us a review, and we'll be back soon with another adventure. Safe travels.